Okay, I think we're ready. <laughs> Hi everyone, this is Mariah Ginto with the very first episode of Kitchen and Keys where I will talk about a real estate topic in conjunction to showing you guys a new recipe that you might want to make. So today we are going to make pad krell rao, which is a Thai basil uh, rice dish, as well as talk about first time home buyers. So let's get started. Okay, so we are going to make pad krell rao and pair it with garlic green beans as well as rice and an egg. So this is a really simple dish that you could whip up in like 20 minutes. All you need is basil, Thai chilies, you could use ground beef, ground pork, ground turkey if you want a healthier alternative. We're using ground beef because that's what I had in my freezer. And then you need things like soy sauce, oyster sauce, fish sauce, sugar, and green beans, garlic, and onion. So I will list all of the ingredients and then the instructions as well at the end of the video. So just stay tuned and then get that information. So we are gonna start with chopping stuff. I am not a professional chopper, so take what I do with very little uh, knowledge. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're gonna start with our garlic. So this garlic will be going into the pad rao as well as the green beans. So the green beans are kinda gonna be like a dupe for the Din Tai Fung ones. I absolutely love Din Tai Fung. Um, if you've never been, I highly suggest whenever you go to the States, but they're also opening one up in Vancouver. So what I like to do, you just crush it, like this, and then you just, I just chop it into slices after. Or, what's even better, sorry, my doggies are like here. What's even better is what I bought, is it's actually a garlic mincer device. So you could either use that, the chopping method, or you could use this. I'm just gonna use this, because it's a little bit more simple. Right here, so right now I have one six garlic garlics that I am mincing up for the pad karao. Um, so what I wanted to talk about in regards to real estate is actually first time home buyers. We're coming up onto the winter season. So that means this is where people are starting to begin their process of wanting to purchase a home in the new year. So if you're a first time home buyer, you might wonder what are kind of the main things that you'll need in order to purchase a home. So the three things that you would need is a down payment, which can range between five to 20%. It could go upward from 20%, but usually five, 10, uh, 15, 20% is the common uh, down payments. You would need guaranteed hours, which means you have a full-time job that you could prove that you are a full-time employee or you, you know, you're working full-time with the income so you could pay, you know, your mortgage month to month. And then the third thing is a good credit score. So good credit score is about 620 and above, but a really good thing to aim for is about 650 and above because the higher your credit score, the better interest rate that you may get. And we all know the interest rates are really not that in favor of um, buyers. So as you could see, I saved a lot of time from chopping and now I have a lot of minced garlic in here. Um, you'll also need garlic for the green beans, but right now we'll just stick with the one dish. Okay, so once you're done mincing this in either your machine or by hand, you are going to take an onion. I recently learned on TikTok how to properly chop an onion, so we'll see if we could do it. So you wanna mince this, you want small little little onions. I'm not a huge fan of onions, but in dishes, I tend to like it. So apparently, you just go like this. You keep like this little stem thingy on. I was usually chopping it, so maybe that's why it would make it really hard. And you don't go all the way through, you only go halfway through. So we're just gonna do that. 
do do do. Don't mind me. We're gonna speed it up in the video. And then you go like horizontally through. Actually, not all the way. Again, if you could do it, don't. I'm not a chef. That's my dad <laughs> and my sister. So then you're gonna go all the way through. Not all the way through. Sorry, you're gonna go halfway through. <laughs> Okay, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go, you're gonna go vertically again. And then you have like little minced ones. So you're just gonna go like that through and you're gonna use half an onion. If it doesn't all, oh, it didn't all chop, but that's okay. It makes it easier. Yay. Now you have half a minced gar, er, onion. So this might like seem like a weird, weird show because I'm jumping through teaching you guys how to make a dish as well as talk about real estate. But I just thought that usually real estate talks are a little bit boring. So you know, people might as well learn something whilst doing it. Um, I'm not, I literally just started cooking when I moved out. So I'm in my new phase of learning how to cook for myself, um, my sister, you know, friends. So these meals are like really simple things that you can do within, that's her, my sister, within like an hour, half an hour, just because like as a realtor, you're always on the go as well. So it's very difficult sometimes to find the time to eat. So this is really good meal prepping and stuff. So we're just gonna set these onions aside, which will go with the garlic. Soup. Yay, those are set aside. Do, do, do. Okay, now you're gonna move on to your Thai chilies. I like it a little bit spicy, so right now I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have seven Thai chilies I'm gonna put in this. Actually, I might just put five. It might be a little bit too spicy. Put those there, okay. And then we're just gonna chop these into like slices. Um, so yeah, like right now it's the winter time. So a lot of people are not really in the mood to buy. So just because the cold is coming in and it's not really, you know, the most appealing for people to move, to move out during this time. So hopefully during this time, it means that the supply will catch up because right now we are in still in a heavy seller's market, which is really where you're getting those multiple offer situations. Um, you know, you hear competing, people are putting offers in that are $100,000, $50,000 over list price. And really, if you're a first time home buyer, how, you could, how can you compete with that? So what I always like to tell my clients who are first time home buyers, um, is that it's not the same market as it was like even last year in January or before then. Um, so it's really important for you to have realistic expectations. Yes, for your first home, it would be amazing to have your dream home, but really sometimes depending on what you're looking for, a $500,000 home isn't gonna get you all of those modern updates, you know, pot lights. Sometimes it might not even get you a garage depending on where you are in the city. So I'm just gonna throw this. So I think it's very important that if you're going into the market of purchasing your first home, that you meet with the realtor and you learn exactly what's out there for your budget, you know? And then your first home could be a stepping stone to your next home and your next home or a stepping home stone to your second home can be your dream home, right? Your first home that you purchase doesn't have to be your final home for the next 50, 60 years, like how it was back in like 40s, 50s, 60s, right? It's very important that you set yourself up for realistic expectations and meeting with the realtor, doing showings really will help in determining what you can afford in this market. So as a first time home buyer, we're just, um, yeah, it's, it's a very difficult time, but there are ways that you can kind of determine if it's the market 
for you. Um, I think it's very important for people, if you're a seller, if you're a buyer, to keep up with the market updates that I put up, with any other realtor puts up, uh, just because it'll tell you what type of market you're, um, you're in, right? It'll tell you if you're a seller's market, if you're in a balanced market, if you're in a buyer's market. So a seller's market is essentially there is less houses on the market compared to buyers. So there's more buyers trying to buy a house. So that's where you get those multiple offer situations. Balance market is that there's an even amount of homes being sold, an even amount of homes being bought. And then a buyer's market is that there are an abundant amount of homes and a small pool of buyers. So buyers essentially hold all the power in negotiations. Um, so I think you should definitely take into account looking into those market updates if you are in the market to buy or sell a home. So now we're gonna jump from real estate back into cooking because I am done, done chopping. So here is my garlic. Here is um, my onion and my Thai chilies. And then we are going to go put it into the pot and mix it all up. And in conjunction with that, I'm actually gonna help have my sister help start with the beans. <laughs> Okay, so now we are over here with my Brock pans that I got on sale on Canadian Tire. So we have our onion, Thai chilies over here, garlic. We are going to take our oil right here that I got from Costco, as well as ground beef, which I have um, defrosted. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna just turn on your stove I have a gas range stove. So as you can see, there is a flame. Then you, all you're gonna do is you're going to put your oil in and just let it heat up. I'd probably say about like a tablespoon of oil. And then while we're going, while we're waiting to heat that up, I will tell you guys about down payments. So. There are basically four down payments that people kind of take a look into when purchasing home, five, 10, 15, 20%. No, for first time home buyers, usually you're putting that 5% down. Um, and that is like a first time home buyer incentive. But a secret that I know that I'm gonna tell you guys is that actually if you are uh, if you already have a home but you are planning on purchasing a secondary primary home meaning you're moving out of the home that you already bought and then you are going to move into another home um you actually are able to put five percent down too which is really crazy that a lot of people don't know um it's just not only for first-time home buyers so um that's a really cool Thing for you guys we're just putting the garlic in uh, for you guys to know as well as um, sorry I lost my train of thought but so yeah if you are buying a, another primary home you're allowed to put 5% down however if you're purchasing a home that's over uh, $500,000 so $500,000 all the way to about $999,999. You have to put 5% down plus 10% of the remaining balance. So if let's say you are purchasing a home that is $600,000, you're actually going to be, um, you're actually going to be putting 5% down of 500,000, which is 25,000 plus 10% of the remainder, which is 600,000 minus 500,000, which is $10,000. So for a $600,000 house, you will be putting down uh, $35,000. So just keep that in mind if you are purchasing a home over $500,000, even if you're a first time home buyer, that still applies to you. 
right? If you're purchasing a home under $500,000, then you can have that 5%. But if you're purchasing between um, those two price points, then unfortunately you have to do that 5% plus 10%. Now the final one is 20%. So that applies to anyone purchasing a home over $1 million, uh, a secondary home, or if you are putting the home under a company, you must put 20% down. This is just because it is more risk for people who are loaning you the money. Um, and they just want to know that you are serious. And also, there's a benefit to it. If you put 20% down, you actually don't have to pay CMHC, uh, CMHC fees, which are usually on top of your monthly mortgage if you pay under 20% down. So if you're a first-time home buyer and you want to put 20% down, feel free to. There are benefits to it. If you do not want to do that, then you could put 5% down if you are purchasing under $500,000. If you're purchasing above $500,000 all the way to $999,000, you are putting that 5% down plus 10% of the remaining balance. And if you're purchasing over a million, have a secondary home, putting it under a company, or if you just want to, uh, you put 20% down and then you avoid those CMHC fees. So what I just did while I was having my long talk about down payment is I added the garlic and the onions in there. I didn't use all the onions. I only used about half. So maybe if you're doing your recipe, only do a quarter of the onion, you know, kind of just take a look at it. And then we're going to put all of the Thai chilies in here with it. And we are just going to mix that all up. So once your onions are a little bit translucent, I also started it at high heat and then turned it down to medium heat when I added the onions. Now you are going to add your nice ground something. I'm adding ground pork, so you could add ground turkey, ground chicken, ground, uh, traditionally it's ground pork, but um, I'm just using ground beef because that's what I have in my in my freezer so. and you just want to chop that up so it's in some nice little pieces you don't want like little like huge you don't want huge squares of it so while we are letting this simmer letting this cook Monica is actually going to show you how to start to cook the green beans This work? Is this thing working? Okay. Hi everyone. I'm Monica. I should just introduce me. I can't really talk about real estate. I don't really know anything about houses, but I could tell you guys fun little stories. So there's that. Okay. So I'm gonna be helping making the green beans that are from Din Tai Fung. I absolutely love Din Tai Fung. I think it's one of my favorite restaurants. So in any dish, we're going to need a lot of garlic. So we have our garlic. I'm glad she has a like garlic chopper because I've been mincing garlic by hand. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut and wash our beans. So I always like to wash my beans first before I cut them. I don't know why. I don't know how many beans I should make. Guess we'll see. Is this more? That's fine. It's just That's the fine. two of okay. us. Just the two of us. We can make it if we try. <gasps> Do you guys like how my mic is like right here? I think it's really funny. Yeah, I think Din Tai Fung is one of my favorite restaurants, like ever. I went to Vegas with my parents for my 21st birthday and I requested to go to Din Tai Fung and I probably ate like 40 dumplings in total because they have dessert dumplings and they're really good. So 
wash your beans and now we're going to cut them for your green beans you want to cut off the stems um, the stems just don't taste good in my opinion so take a few here i like to line them up so i could cut some all at once instead of cutting them individually and then now we have our trusty little knife what you want to do when you're cutting is you want to have a little claw so you don't cut your uh cut your fingies off something i learned when I was taking culinary in high school. You came for the real estate and you stayed for the food. Okay, and all our beans are cut, so I'm going to go throw these. Can I give miso one? No. Okay. Okay, now, where's the bottom of this garlic chopper? And now we need a lot of garlic. Now, we're gonna go this way. Okay, so, I hope you enjoyed Monica's little um, prepping. So, we are finished with the ground beef. It's all brown, all of the vegetables mixed in, so it should look like this. So you see, it's all brown together, mixed in together. So what you wanna do is if you have like a lot of excess oil, you want to dump out the oil. I don't have as much, so I don't need to right now, but I just don't like excess oil. So it's always a good idea in order to do that. So after this, you're actually going to add your soy sauce, fish sauce, um, and hoisin sauce and basil. So you want to kind of have it at like a low heat, uh, just because you don't want this to like be over overcook so what we're gonna do oh yeah and your sugar so you can get your um your little measuring things or you could do it with like a spoon so you'll need a tablespoon and a teaspoon so tablespoon teaspoon so what you're gonna do is you are going to do a tablespoon of your Soy sauce. Actually, two tablespoons. So one. Two. And then also a tablespoon, two tablespoons of your hoisin. So you can use hoisin or oyster sauce. So one. Two. And then we put that in the sink. And then just a teaspoon of your fish sauce. Or what we like to say in Tagalog, but this. If you're Filipino, you know what's up. There you go. And then you're just going to mix this all together. On that low heat. If you want to add a little bit more crunch, you can. Um... Sorry, those are my dogs. 
They heard a dog barking, so now they're barking. If you want to add a little bit more crunch, what you could do is you add water chestnuts. A little bit sorry. They're just, ah, silence. They're just ah, really sucking. If you want to add a little bit more crunch to it, my dad does add water chestnuts to his, but I didn't buy any. So what you're gonna do now is that you are gonna grab your basil and you're gonna go and chop the basil. So I'm gonna go chop some basil. So I'm back. So now you're gonna grab your basil and you wanna chop. Don't get this into this quick. You wanna chop a bunch of basil, probably like a lot. I probably have one, one, two, three, four, um, five. Six, seven, eight. So I have eight basil leaves that I'm going to chop to put into this thing. So all you want to do is just like, what I do is I roll it up, take out the stems if you chop them. So there's the stem. So we're just going to chop that out. And if you roll it, you can roll all of the leaves at once. So you're going to go and chop these. And then you're just going to add it in. You're just going to add it in over here into your mix. And we're just going to mix it around. Okay, so this is all done. The pad raw, pad raw is done. So we're just going to set this aside. Sorry for butchering the Thai language, by the way. Maybe I should just call it... Thai basil beef or something, but yeah. Okay, so now we are going to move on to the bean dupes. So what you wanna do is you are going to grab a pretty deep pot for frying, because you wanna, we're gonna just flash fry these. Not flash, not, I don't know what I was trying to say. <laughs> uh, flash fry these and then um, take them out, throw them in a pan and simmer them with the garlic. So I'm using canola oil for this one because I didn't want to use all of the olive oil. Okay, so now while we're waiting for this to heat up, we are gonna go back to some real estate, um, real estate topics. So one of the major questions that I always get as a realtor is, Mariah, is it the right time to buy? And my answer to that is, whenever you're ready is always the right time to buy. It is very difficult to time the market. Yes, there are, there are statistics, there are reports, that you can look at that'll help you take into account whether or not the market is the right uh, in the right state for you. However, it's it's impossible to time the market. But the good thing about real estate is is that if you hang on to your home, into your investment properties, over time, it will always go up in value. So if you are ready to buy, you know you find the right home for you, don't hesitate to purchase it just because you hear on the news, you hear from other people, you hear from other realtors, you hear off social media, it's not the right time to buy, you should wait, you should wait, you should wait. No, if you keep on waiting, you will never know when you'll get that opportunity to purchase that home again. Yes, interest rates might be lower, you know, 
yes, um, you know, there's other things that could come take that can be better. However, will you find that home in that neighborhood that you loved? Maybe not, maybe yes. You know, it's all up in the air, but all you can do right now is if you are ready to buy and you find the home that you love, then, you know, you should definitely do it because over time your equity will build. So you never have to worry about losing money unless you're trying to, you know, make a quick buck. Um, if you're trying to make purely monthly income off of it, right? If you are ready to buy, do it is what my advice to people are. And if you're not ready to buy, we can work together in order to get you to the place that you need. So in order to check your oil, what I do is take, I, I take a wood chopstick and I stick it in there. And if it like starts bubbling, then that means it's ready to fry. We're not quite there yet. Maybe like a minute or two longer. Um, not that, not quite there yet so you want this heat high because as soon as you put your beans in you're like literally taking them back out and you know just putting them in the pan so actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this the beef out i'm gonna get monica to wash this pot for me so we're gonna just put it in a bowl and then we're gonna use this also as the pan to actually mix those green beans in. So let's check this oil again. So I hope this like cooking class slash learn about real estate thing has really helped you guys out. I kind of wanted to try something a little bit more different as opposed to just like a podcast where you talk about real estate and you just sit there and you watch people talk and it's not that fun. At least you're learning how to like make a quick meal and learning about real estate. So I'll be doing this every single, um, I'll be doing this every single week. Let's see, next week, um, I'm not too sure what we're talking about yet. I have to make up the script. But I thought for some home buyers, it's probably the best because they are the population that needs to be the most educated. You've never bought a home before. Um, so you need to know what goes into buying a home, right? You don't want to just be thrown in. So that's that's why I highly recommend people in order to get realtors. You know, there's a lot, there's a, there's a stigma against realtors, a lot of misconceptions, but if you're a buyer, you should always use a realtor. The commission comes out of your mortgage, out of your loan. You're not paying a realtor out of pocket. It's built into your mortgage, so you're not paying anything on top. If you purchase a $400,000 home, it's a $400,000 home. Your realtor isn't charging you $400,000 plus their commission, you know? So if you're a first time home buyer, if you're a home buyer at all, it's really advantageous to have someone who is in the market, who can educate you, who can show you exactly what is available to you in your price range, and who can help you through the negotiations, maybe through multiple offers, because we are here to help. At least I am here to help. I know some realtors give, you know, the group a bad, you know, leave some people with a bad taste in their mouth, but a lot of the realtors, if not most realtors, are really there to help you out, to build a friendship with you in order uh, in order to help you make the best financial decision for yourself because purchasing a home is not a small feat. It is probably one of the largest financial decisions that you will make and it's advantageous to have someone on your side. So, this oil is done. We're gonna pop these guys in here and then we're gonna pop them into the pan with and then after the garlic i'll show you guys that after so i'm really scared of frying things in oil so oh there they go oh yeah we're just you're doing like a minute i think that honestly guys i'm like so scared of oil and frying things oh 
like a little wrinkly like when you stay in the bathtub for too long that's essentially what you want your beans to look like because it's exactly like your finger so we're just gonna we're just gonna let those fry hopefully i don't get you know attacked by the oil but yeah like i was saying is that when it comes to realtors commission is actually built into the mortgage so let's say you're buying a four hundred thousand dollar house the, more, the realtor's commission is built into that mortgage loan. So you're not paying anything out of pocket. If anything, if you decide not to get a realtor, you're actually paying another realtor double in order to do less work and not represent you, right? So if that money is already going to go to someone because it's built in to your loan, into the cost, you might as well choose someone who's on your side, someone you enjoy working with, someone who is skilled in order to help you take on multiple offers, finding the home, you know, someone you get along with because showings can last, last a long time. And it's very difficult to spend that much time with someone if you don't like them. You know, showings can last a day, half a day. So just imagine working with someone or having to contact different, multiple different people to view a home. Um, instead of just working with one person who answers your calls, who answers your text messages, who answers any question that you may have. So I think it's, I think it's very advantageous for buyers in general, um, just to work with a realtor that you, that you like, that you trust, who has the knowledge to educate you to help answer your questions. Because you don't want to make the wrong decision just because you want to save some money, because it could, be detrimental and cost you more money in the end. And we've all heard those terrifying stories of people making bad decisions when it comes to purchasing a home. Now they can't sell, the realtor didn't educate them of what's going on. You know, they paid too much for the home because they just wanted it, they loved it. But there are so many problems that came with it, right? So just take that into account when you're purchasing a home. Okay, so these guys are starting to look like my finger when I'm in the shower for too long or in the bathtub for too long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use tongs because we don't want, um, what do you call it? We don't want too much oil in here, but we want a little bit because we still have to fry the garlic. With them. So we're gonna just rinse them off a little bit, transfer them into another pan. So you can awkwardly watch me do this for a little bit. So the oil that is transferred on the beans that go into the pack should be enough. Because there is like a lot of oil in here. So I'm gonna just move this guy. Remember, do not pour your oil down your sinks in your kitchen. It could cause a lot of pipe issues if you do if you are like newly moved out, newly buying a home. So we are now refrying it again, but with the special ingredient of every single dish, garlic that Monica finally chopped up in the machine that I have. And then we are literally just going to fry these guys again. This is actually the first time that I'm making these dupes so hopefully they come out crispy and not gross. Fingers crossed, everyone. If you feel like you want me to kind of cook something else, let me know in the comments. Um, if you want to know a more about real estate, especially buying in Calgary, surrounding areas, I work in Airdrie, Chestermere, Okotoks, High River, Cochrane, and Calgary. 
if you want to learn about purchasing or selling in those areas, make sure to contact me too. And um, I'm hoping that I can help you navigate through purchasing a home in Calgary or selling a home in Calgary. So now these are getting a little bit more crispy. We are just, you know, gonna shake them a little bit, feel a little bit special because that's what chefs do in the kitchen when I watch Iron Chef and Gordon Ramsay, right? And we are just gonna let these simmer. So on top of this, we are actually gonna have rice which Monica is going to cook. Um, we're gonna make three cups of rice for this, even though there's two of us, but there's always leftovers, right? What I recently learned through TikTok is actually, you are only supposed to eat non-refrigerated rice up to two hours after you cook it. So, I don't know how true that is because apparently there's like a bacteria that could grow in it that can make you really sick, cause fatality. Um, I didn't know that. Will I be changing my ways and not eating rice two hours after I cook it? No, I will not, but just for your knowledge. So now Monica is gonna guide you through how to make rice. And when you come back to me, I will be making some sunny side eggs. I'm back, your favorite cameo. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make rice. So the first step, probably one of the hardest steps, get rice. You can't make rice unless you have rice. So <laughs> we're gonna be making three cups, she said. Um, I'm pretty sure that means three gatangs. That's what I grew up calling it. So we're gonna make three, three of those. So. Um, you get this and you put three cups of rice in here. And then, this is a really important part. A lot of people don't do this, I guess, is to wash your rice. So, um, we're going to wash our rice. Panning. Okay. Okay, I'm going to pan back to me. So you learn how to make rice. In that meantime, the beans finish and I transfer it to another bowl. So now we are going to make eggs, specifically fried eggs, like sunny side. Well, I don't really know the names of the different eggs, so <laughs> you, can, you can tell me what it is. So I have a mini pan that I just use only for eggs because I hate having like a huge, a huge pan and I was looking for that. I hate having a huge pan just for like one egg or two eggs. Like I, I don't know, I have to wash so many dishes just to make eggs. Okay, so you're gonna pour about like a teaspoon, tablespoon, uh, probably closer to a tablespoon of oil. And you're just gonna let this soak up. You want it to get a little bit hot because you don't want your eggs like slipping. Oh no, you want your eggs slipping in there. You don't want it to stick to the pan. Sorry. We have the heat back on high, but while I'm cooking them, I'm actually going to turn down the heat because we don't want the top to be uncooked and raw and then the bottom to be like, to be like overcooked, right? Um, I need to get my, my tool. Sorry, I just need to clean it. Okay, so now the oil is like very, um, I don't know, slippy. <laughs> okay, and at this time, I'm gonna turn it down to medium as I add the eggs. 
So, so we got this crack it, and then there's one. Okay, and then crack it. Here's the second. Okay, so basically we're just gonna let those fry in the oil until they're cooked. So this is really good with this dish. Um, it adds like an extra depth of flavor. So you wanna separate these eggs. Once again, I'm scared of oil, so that's why I'm so far back from it. And we're just gonna let these guys cook in the oil. I like to turn it so then different parts of the egg gets coated in oil and cooks. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. I have it at a four. And we will just wait for this. So while we're waiting for this to cook, um, what I learned about eggs is actually you're not supposed to add salt and pepper while they're cooked. You're supposed to add it after they're cooked because it could cause them to coagulate and um, look really gross when you eat them. So the final thing that I'm going to talk about is when it comes to first time home buyers is basically the buying process. So before you meet with the realtor, what's really important for you guys to do is actually contact a mortgage broker. You know, a lot of people think based off of how much they make, they know exactly how much they are able to purchase. However, there's a lot of things that are taken into account, like your debt, um, you know, student loans, credit card debt, if you bought a new car, your credit score, um, how long you've been at your job. So I think it's very advantageous for people to contact a mortgage broker before you even contact a realtor. Um, the, they will be able to give you a better idea of exactly what your ability to purchase is. After you get into contact with a mortgage broker um, and figure your finances out, then you should contact a realtor. We will go, we will set up, at least for me, uh, initial presentation where I will go over everything that goes into purchasing a home. So what basically happens is when you meet with a realtor, you're basically saying you're ready to purchase in an X amount of time. So usually I work with my super serious clients. We finish within like three months. If you're kind of just wanting to not in a rush, you know, it could go six months to a year. If you're kind of just looking to start, and work towards actually purchasing a home, then we could go like a year upwards. So um, once you meet with the realtor, what we'll do is we'll go through the presentation, then we will actually start looking at homes. We'll come up with the criteria that you want. Then we'll start viewing homes, which is the awesome fun part. Once we view homes, we will make an offer on a home that you like. So we could either be in a multiple offer situation, we're the only ones who have an offer in. It really depends on, on the home that we are uh, looking at. So we're gonna take that, right? And then after that, after we make an offer, right, we are in the conditional phase. So you will put an initial deposit down once our offer gets accepted then we will go through the conditions which are usually commonly financing meaning that you'll have to go another round to you know submit to your lender that you are still capable of living up to the initial agreement then we will do a home inspection which basically means a home inspector will come inside the home inside the condo and take a look at it make sure that it is livable and will tell us of any deficiencies that may be in a home. However, keep in mind a home inspector is just a generalist, so they just give us a general idea. If there's a serious issue, we'll have to call in a specialist. And that that is a negotiation of whether or not the seller wants to help us out or not. And then the third one, only applies if you're buying a condo or a townhome, is a condo document review. So we'll look at things like the reserve fund, um, the bylaws, things like that, and go through everything to make sure that is the condo or townhome you would like to live in. 
after we do all of those conditions, we basically decide if that is the home that we want to go with. If it, we say yes, we waive conditions and the, the sale is final. If we say no, we don't like this home, there's something wrong in the, in the financing, there's something wrong in the home inspection contract documents, then we say no, we don't want this home. We basically get that initial deposit back that we made and then we go look for homes again. Let's say we waive conditions, then during that time between when we waive conditions and possession, possession day, you get things you will like your mail, electricity, give you set up, give you a little uh, gift, and start buying pictures, sure, because you're you're moving into a new home, your, start um, figuring out how you want your purchase of your home, look, and, look then, stuff, and then we have you are a homeowner of a new home, of another home, whichever one you like, and that is a fun process, of course. There's a little bit more that goes into things, um, but that's kind of like the general rundown. So while I was talking, the eggs finished up, they look like this, and we are going to add salt and pepper to them now. So we got our handy dandy salt and pepper shakers, and a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. Okay. I have plated everything and now as garnishes we are going to chop some limes. So what I like to do is I cut them in half then I do like a little diagonal cut and then another diagonal cut and then you have and then we're gonna put this on after we play. We just have to wait for the rice to cook. Okay, so the rice is done and now we are going to play it so we can eat because I'm really hungry. <laughs> Okay, so there we have it. Thank you guys for joining me so much. Hopefully I see you again next week. And hopefully you enjoyed the first episode of Asian Home.